course, my life is totally insignificant, it's true. But all the same, every one of those cucumbers was grown by me with my own two hands. I, I simply cannot permit them to be picked without my getting some remuneration. They pick them, they'll go on picking them. But surely if one's property is being violated, one has the right to ask for the protection of the law? There are no laws, just orders. Right turn, by the left, march, and away you go. When they shout, halt, you stop. Well, if they only did it from hunger, I could understand. Hunger can explain practically anything. In fact, you might even say that Angels all don't act... eat. That didn't stop Satan setting himself against God? What? Hmm. Well? I've uh, come to see Zakhar Ivanovich, sir, with a humble request. Oh, someone from the factory has been stealing his cucumbers. Uh, well. You'll have to tell my brother, not me. Uh, perfectly correct, and I am, in point of fact, on my way to Pologi, see him this very morning. you're always full of stupid complaints. But well, what will we given tongues for, if not for submitting complaints? Oh, shut up, Pologi. You're more like a mosquito than a man. Go on. Did I insult someone again yesterday? <laughs> mm. Why am I always rude when I'm drunk? Well, some people are better drunk than sober. Who was it yesterday? The prosecutor. Oh. You told him he had a mouth like a mouse trap. <laughs> well, first you insulted Zaka Ivanovich. Mm, yes, I always begin with my brother first. And then it was the prosecutor. You told him that his brother's wife has a string of lovers. Oh, yes. Well. And then you no, were not. No, 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 no. I don't want to find I insulted everybody. Ah, uh, it's a dreadful thing, this vodka. Hmm. You feel sorry for me, Herr Grifania? Very sorry, sir. You're so honest with everyone, just as if you weren't a gentleman at all. <laughs> well, Khan here isn't sorry for anybody. Oh, he's a philosopher. It's the people who've taken a beating in life that develop a philosophy. And for a soldier to start thinking, he must have taken many a good beating, huh? Hi, Khan! You've been given a rough time. That's why you're so clever. Clever? One glimpse at the general and I turned into a fool again. Khan! Swimming! On the double now! So? Is my wife still asleep? Oh, she's up and has had her bath. You feel sorry for me, huh? You should have treatment, sir. Ah, then pour me a drop of brandy. Oh, Yakov Ivanovich. One less drink isn't going to help, is it? Where's Zakhar Ivanovich? He's, he's in the... Uh, good morning, Yakov Ivanovich. You want to hear the news? Those damn workers are demanding that I fire Dishkov, the foreman. They threaten to stop work if I don't, damn them. Well? <laughs> Firing them. Ah, uh, yes, very simple, but that's not the point. The point is that concessions are bad, bad for discipline. Today it's only firing the foreman. Tomorrow they'll be wanting my head on a plate. Oh, well, do you think that they will wait until tomorrow? Uh, it's very funny, I'm sure, but just you try, try disciplining all 2,000 of them with their heads turned by your brother with all his liberal nonsense. Well, you must tell my brother that. Yes, I've told him once, I'll tell him again. Good morning, Mikhail Vasilyevich. Uh, good morning, Polina Dmitrovna. Mikhail Vasilyevich, there's some workers in the office demanding to see you. Tell them to go to hell! Oh. Uh, I beg your pardon, Polina Dmitrovna. You're always swearing. What is it this time? It's your proletariat. They used to come for begging for things humbly, but now it's demand. You're very hard on the men, I must say. Oh, God. What shall I tell the men? Tell them to wait. He has an interesting face. That clerk, has he been with us long? About a year. Who is he? A clerk! <laughs> well, what is it? I've come to see Zakhar Ivanovich, sir. What for? On account, sir, of an infringement of the laws of property. Uh, allow me to introduce another of our new clerks. He has a passion for growing vegetables. Oh. Yes, he also harbors a deep conviction that everything's against him. The sun, England, 
new machinery, the frogs. Uh, sir, when the frogs start croaking, they bother everybody. Get back on down to the office. What the hell are you up here for all the time demanding, huh? Go on. There, you see how strict you are? And he's quite amusing, really. I'm sure that Russians must be much more original than people abroad. Well, if you'd said much more aboriginal, I'd agree with you. <laughs> I've been in management for 15 years now, and I know all there is to know about your noble Russian working man. Where's Sakhar Ivanich? Finishing up yesterday's game of chess with your brother. Oh, God. Meanwhile, the workers are planning to go out on strike after lunch. What? Yes. We must close down the factory at once. Oh. Well, we... Russia will never come to any good. It's a country of anarchists. Work-shy anarchists. They have an ingrown revulsion for work. They have no respect for the law. Well, of course, how can there be any respect for the law in a country that has no law? I mean, between you and me, our government might just as well not. I'm not it. trying to justify anyone. The government's as riddled with anarchy as anyone else. Ah, here they are. Good morning, Zakhar Ivanich. Good morning, Nikolai. May I tell you the latest results of your liberal policies with the workers? They are demanding that I fire Dishkov, the foreman, immediately. If I don't, they stop work. Huh? How about that? Dishkov? Isn't he the man who's always fighting? Of course dismiss him. It's only just. Oh, really? Can't we talk seriously? It's a question of good business practice, not of justice. Justice is Nikolai's affair, not ours. I'm sorry, but your idea of justice is the ruination of good business. Oh, come now, you talk in paradoxes. The paradox is the idea of justice in industry. You are shouting, Mikhail. Talking business so early in the morning. I'm sorry, Paulina Dmitrovna, I have to. Until I went away on vacation, I held the factory like that. These Sunday classes, these reading circles and so on, are unwise. When the raw Russian brain is touched with a spark of knowledge, it doesn't burst into the light of reason. It simply smolders and stinks. Oh, I'm sorry, I seem to be digressing. You should be speaking a little more quiet. Well, thank you for your advice, Nikolai. I'm sure it's very sound, but it doesn't happen to suit me. In a mere six months, Zakhar Ivanich, your treatment of the workers has undermined the entire structure that it has taken me eight years of hard work to build. They respected me. They regarded me as the master. It's perfectly clear now that uh, there are two masters, one kind and one cruel. You, of course, are the, the kind one. Really? I've been put in an idiotic position. The last time this happened, I told them that I would close down the factory rather than dismiss Ditchkov. They realized that I meant what I said and calmed down. Then last Friday, you told Grekov that Ditchkov was a roughneck and then you intended to fire him. My dear man, he goes around hitting people. We can't allow that sort of thing. We're civilized people. First and foremost, we are factory owners. But surely this man isn't all that valuable. It seems to me that it's not so much a question of the man as of the principle. It's a question of who are the masters in this factory. You and I or the workers. Yes, yes I understand that. It smacks of socialism to me. Oh, socialism? <laughs> what, here in the country? How amusing. Uh, amusing, yes, perhaps it is to you. All children are amusing, but they grow up till one day you find yourself facing full-grown enemies. What do you want to do then? Close down the factory. Let them go hungry for a while. But that's so cruel. Certainly. Life demands it. But is it really unavoidable? Have you something else to suggest? Yes, I could go and talk to them. No, oh, you just give in to them and make my position even more impossible. I only want to do what's best. I'm a, a country gentleman, not an industrialist. All this is very new to me, very difficult. I, I, I want to see justice done, but... We uh... must make a decision. There are two possibilities. Either I close down the factory or I go. Closing down the factory will cost us nothing. I've seen to that. I see. I... Nikolai Vasilyevich, what do you think? From an abstract point of view, of course, my brother is right. 
if civilization is to mean anything to us, we must stand firmly by our principles. A factory is a state in miniature. Oh, you'll get in trouble with that sort of analogy. Not at all. Every state must have a governing body that can bind together the conflicting interests of its component parts with hoops of steel. Is that out of a book? Don't be so testy. A body in power is only firmly in power so long as it holds its subject strictly within the framework it has drawn up for. In other words, you agree we should close down? Oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Mikhail Vasilich, I will give you my decision in, uh, in ten minutes. Certainly. Paulina? This is awful. Spineless jellyfish. Calm down, Mikhail. There's no need to lose all control. Can't you understand? Look. Hmm. I'm not a fool. They hate me, thanks to that imbecile. I can't just abandon the business. You and Cleopatra will be the first to blame me if I did. Our entire capital is tied up in it. If I pull out now, that idiot will ruin everything. You may be exaggerating. The men are asking for you. Well, what is it? There's a rumor that the factory is going to be closed after lunch. How about that? Who could have told them that? Probably Yakov Ivanich. Damn. And what concern is it of yours, Mr. Sensoff? Hmm? Coming up here, asking, what? Uh, the bookkeeper asked me to fetch you. He did? Uh, what's this habit you have of smirking like that? What are you so happy about? I think that's my business. Well, I don't. I strongly advise you to watch your conduct when you're with me. Yes? May I go? You may. Aha! It's the managing director. Well. Aren't you in a hurry to get someplace, or have you just come? <laughs> well, good morning, Matt P. Nikolaitch. Good morning. I hope you're not too tired. Oh, no, just a little. My arms ache from all that rowing yesterday. Are you on your way to work? Yes. Oh, well, I'll go as far as the terrace with you. You know, there was a lot of sense in what you were saying yesterday, but the way you said it was too intense. Some things are far more effective if they're said without too much emotion. <laughs> you know, I... Did you see that? One moment you're telling off an employee for being insolent, the next moment he's hobnobbing under your very eyes with the wife of your business partner's brother. The brother's a drunkard, the wife's an actress, and what the hell they're doing here in the first place, nobody has any idea. She is an odd woman. Good-looking, most attractive, in fact, and yet she seems bent upon having an affair with a pauper. <laughs> it's original, perhaps, but foolish. It's called being democratic. She's a daughter of a laundress, so she thinks she's happier among the common people. Mm, I have a notion she's quite approachable, too. Seems the sensual type. You needn't gape like that. I know what's happened to that liberal of ours. Mm. I tell you, what Russia lacks is vitality. Nobody knows their own place. They just wander about, dreaming and talking. Whole things falling apart. There are hardly any people of any real talent about. If there are any, they're all anarchists. The government's just a gang of crazy, angry, stupid men. Unable to understand anything. Unable to do anything. Instead of a Russian history, all we have is the endless Russian scandal. Above all, nobody takes the slightest interest in their work. You are talking the most extraordinary nonsense. What? Mikhail Vasilyevich. I, uh... I have made my decision. At last. Who are you shouting to? Everyone's suddenly beginning to shout for some reason. What's your brother so excited about? I doubt that that would interest you. Possibly. You know, he reminds me of a policeman I once knew. We used to have this policeman on duty at the theater. 
Very small man with protruding eyes. I don't see the resemblance to my brother. Oh, I didn't mean a physical resemblance. This policeman was always in a perpetual hurry. He didn't just walk, he ran. He didn't smoke, he nearly asphyxiated himself. He didn't seem to be living at all. He was so busy trying to attain something as quickly as possible. Though he never knew quite what. Are you sure he didn't? Quite sure. Anyone with a clear purpose pursues it calmly. But the poor policeman just ran and ran and ran and got in his own way and everybody else's. In the end, I believe, he was run over by some horses and killed. Are you trying to say that all my brother's efforts are pointless? No, I didn't mean that. It's just that, well, he is very like that policeman. None of it very flattering to my brother. <laughs> I wasn't trying to flatter him. You have a curious way of flirting. Indeed. Yes, it's rather depressing. Don't some women find you rather depressing? Uh huh. seems to be going wrong today somehow. Nobody's had breakfast. They're all in a bad temper. It's as if they hadn't had enough sleep. Nadia went off into the woods early this morning with Cleopatra. I told her not to, only yesterday. Life is really getting too difficult. You eat far too much. Tanya, your attitude towards other people is abnormal. <laughs> Why? Because I'm calm. Oh, it's easy enough to be calm when you're free of all responsibility. But when you've got thousands of people depending on you for food, I can tell you it's no joke. Well, give it all away, then. Give it all away. The land, the factory, everything. How can you talk like that? You should see how upset Zachar is. We've decided to close the factory for a while until the workers come to their senses. But can't you see how distressing that is? Hundreds of people will be out of work. A lot of them have children. It's terrible. Well, don't close it, then, if it's so terrible. Tanya, you are maddening. If we don't close the factory, then the workers will go on strike, and that will be even worse. What will be even worse? Everything. We can't give in to their every demand, can we? Anyway, it's not their demands at all. It's those socialists putting ideas into their heads and teaching them to shout. I can't understand. Socialism abroad is perfectly appropriate. It gives life variety. And it's all done out in the open. Here in Russia, it gets whispered to the workers in holes and corners, in spite of the fact that in a monarchy, it's quite out of place. What we need is a constitution and not this sort of thing. What do you think, Nikolai Vasilyevich? A little differently. Socialism is a highly dangerous phenomenon in a country that has no philosophy of its own, no racial philosophy, so to speak, where everyone grabs at any ideas that are going around. It's bound to fall on fertile soil. We are a people of extremes. That is our sickness. Oh, yes, how true that is. We are a people of extremes. Particularly you and your husband. Tanya, you don't know anything about it. Zahar is considered to be one of the reds of the province. <laughs> well, I should think he would only be red with shame. Tanya, what is the matter with you? Oh, your life is like a play put on by amateurs. The parts have been badly cast. Nobody's got a scrap of talent. Everyone's acting abominably, so the play makes absolutely no sense at all. And everyone's <laughs> complaining, oh, what a boring play. Oh, you're right. And I have a feeling the extras in the stagehands are beginning to realize it. One of these days, they're going to just chase us right off the stage. What are you getting at? <laughs> Hi, Paulina. Milk for the general, huh? Cold milk. Oh, the tombstone of the law. <laughs> My excellent niece. Gone. Question one. What is a soldier? Whatever those in command wish him to be, Your Excellency. Can he be a fish? A soldier must be able to do Dear anything. Dear Uncle, must you amuse us with this little scene every single day? Every day after his swim. Yes, every day. And every day different, huh? That's how it has to be done. Do you enjoy it, Khan? The General enjoys it. 
Yes, but what about you? Of course he does. No, I don't really. I'm a bit old for circus acts. But if you want to eat, you have to put up with it. About turn. Hmm? Quick march, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. <laughs> don't you get a little bored with making a fool of an old man? Well, I'm an old man myself. And you bore me. Actresses are supposed to amuse people. What are you doing about that? Nikolai. <laughs> Excuse me. <sighs> Uncle, did you know? I don't know anything. We're closing the factory. Oh, good idea. It hoots. There you are, sound asleep every morning, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> close it down by all means. So, um, we better take some precaution. Get off a telegram to the vice governor. Tell him to send some soldiers. Sign my name to it. He's my friend, too. Oh, it feels wonderful to take a stand, huh? It's a sign of youth. <laughs> I may be older in years than you, Nikolai, but I'm younger in heart. <laughs> I think it's less a question of youth than of being highly strung. <laughs> I'll show you who's highly strung. <laughs> Goodbye! <laughs> Oh, my God. What's happening? We're closing the factory. Oh, no. that? You already told me that. Oh, it's all so boring. Oh. I agree, I agree. da dee 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 da dee <laughs> oh, oh, what's happening? We've had an adventure. Oh. Ask Cleopatra, we were just coming out of the woods and suddenly these workers came up to us. <laughs> Nadia, I've told you not to go into the woods. I shall see that my husband dismisses them. May I go? Oh, no, please, stay. Uh, who's that? He's the one who rescued us, Grandfather. Don't you understand? Oh, I don't understand a thing. Rescued you? They came up to us and they said, Dear ladies, let's all sing a song together. Oh, what impertinence. No, it wasn't. Nadia, you're always running about... Well, what's the matter? Thank you, young man, for defending these ladies. Well, they didn't need defending. Nobody was harming them. Aunt Paulina, how can you speak like that? Please don't teach me how to speak. But you don't understand. Uncle, it wasn't... Here. Here. No, thank you. Grandfather. Who are you? A worker. Well, why don't you take the money? I don't want it. What do you want? Nothing. Uh, how about uh, the young lady's hand? Eh? Grandfather! <laughs> Uncle! How old are you? <laughs> what? How old are you? Why? At your age, you should have more sense. What? Did you hear that? He's an old man. Don't worry. It's the heat. It puts them in a bad mood. No, they, uh, they wouldn't have understood anyway. How dare he? Well, you shouldn't have thrust that money at him that way. Oh, Nadia. I shall see that my husband dismisses that man. But Nadia's impossible. These socialists of yours become more impudent every day. What makes you think he's a socialist? All the superior workers are socialists. Zakhar can throw that scoundrel right out of the factory. The factory has been closed. Out! Tanya, go and call Nadia back, will you, dear? Tell her that I'm deeply shocked. How old. Huh? They whistled at us. And you, you just play along with them, these reading circles. What's the point of it all? Yes, I... And on Thursday, when I was driving through the village, imagine, they even whistled at me. <laughs> well, apart from the rudeness, they might have frightened the horses. Well, it's all your husband's fault. 
As my husband says, he doesn't keep a proper distance between himself and those people. Zachar is too gentle, but he's convinced that a friendly relationship with the people is to the advantage of both sides. Oh, well, as far really? as the peasants are concerned, this is true. They lease the land and pay their rent and everything. Nadia. Oh, my dear, can't you see how improper your it's behavior you who's was? improper. You're all out of your minds with the heat. You don't understand anything. Oh, Grandfather, how stupid you are. Me? Stupid? Well, aren't you ashamed of yourself? Ashamed? No. Well, I've had enough for one day. Go on. And you, Aunt Paulina, you talk about politics, not even to offer him a cup of tea. Oh, this is intolerable. And Cleopatra Petrovna was polite as anything on the way back, but as soon what as we did get you here... What expect you... me to do? Kiss him? I am tired of your reprimands. There's your democracy for you, your humanism. Up to this point, my husband's had to cope with it all, but just you wait. It'll all come back on you eventually. Nadia, when your mother was dying, she entrusted me with you and your upbringing. Leave Mama out of it. Nadia, your mother was my sister. I knew her better you than you. You don't know anything. Poor people and rich people can never be sisters. My mother was poor, but she was good. You couldn't ever understand poor people. You don't even understand Aunt Tanya. Perfectly healthy girl, and suddenly she throws a fit like that. Tanya, I see your influence at work here. You talk to her about everything, just as if she was a grown-up. Taking her to meet our employees, those clerks, so-called working-class intellectuals, it's ludicrous. Oh, Paulina, for goodness sake, calm down. Sit down and have a drink or something. Now, you must admit, my dear, you weren't very polite to that workman. <laughs> well, really, my dear, there is a limit to everything. There's going to be a riot at the factory. Oh, Yakov, stop it. There is going to be a riot at the factory. Uh, and they're going to burn the factory down and roast us all in the fire like rabbits. Oh, Yakov. Drunk already. <laughs> By this time of day, I'm always drunk already. Now, Cleopatra really is a worthless bitch. It's not because she has all those lovers but because there's a vicious dog squatting where her heart should be. Yeah. Oh, my God, where is everybody? Uh, it's a very small dog with a mangy coat, and it's a very greedy dog. It's eaten everything in sight, still it wants some more, and it doesn't know what, so it gets in a state, and it... It's your brother. Uh, but I don't want my brother. Tanya, I know it's no longer possible for you to love me. Still, I don't like it. I don't. And I can't help it. Well, have they announced yet that the factory's closing down? <laughs> it hasn't been announced, but the workers know. How? Who told them? I did. Whatever for? <laughs> I just did. They're interested. I think they're rather fond of me. They like to see that the boss's brothers are drunkard. Makes them feel that all men are equal. Yakov, of course I've no, I've no objection to your going to the factory. My husband says that when he talks to the workers, he criticizes the way the factory's managed. That's a lie. I don't know anything about management or mismanagement. He also says that sometimes you take vodka with you. But more lies, I don't take it with me. I send out for it, and not sometimes, always. But Yakov, surely, as the owner's brother... Uh, that's not my only failing. Well, I'll say no more. There is an atmosphere of hostility growing up around here, which I don't understand. It's true. You should have heard Nadia just a moment ago. 
Oh, sir, excuse me. What? What is it? Shot. But who? Uh, uh, workers. Now, what is it? Lunch is ruined. Is the doctor there? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Did you see the man who fired? It's a red-headed man. You hear? A red-haired man? Yes, sir. Red hair, green eyes. You should let him rest now, sir. Hold your tongue! Where is the doctor? Where is the doctor? Don't shoot! You rest there, Mikhail Vasilich. Don't worry. Get, Get rid of everyone who is needed here! Where is the doctor? Gone. No. Surely, yes. And it was you who put him in front of that bullet. Hmm? He hounded them here and he hounded them there and now there. Misha? He's not dead, is he? Wherever he was going, he didn't get there. You get out! He said it was a red-haired man who shot him. You should act on that at once. Oh, my dear. You're to blame. I don't understand. You killed him? Yes, Zahar Ivanich. What are you saying? Oh, oh my God. You set the workers against him. You took away his authority. They were terrified of him. Now they've murdered him. And you're to blame. There's no need to shout, Cleopatra. <laughs> Please! Well? Murderers! Why your heart is heavy. The copper kopeck chains us all. Maybe not you, miss. Not yet. But the kopeck sings its song to all of us. Love me as you love yourself. Aunt Tanya, why does everyone talk quietly when there's a dead person in the house? I don't know. That's our guilt, miss. But Levshin dead people haven't always been killed. And whenever anyone's dead, people talk quietly. Oh, we kill them all, miss. Some with bullets, some with words. We drive them into the earth. And we don't see it. We don't feel it. But we sense it. Then we feel a little sorry, a little ashamed. Then we're frightened. You see, miss, we're all being readied for the grave. But what must we do, Levshin? Today it's frightening. Tomorrow it's forgotten. We're ignorant people because there's only the one road for all of us. And maybe you don't feel your guilt yet. Corpses don't worry you. You can talk loud before them. 
What must we do, ma'am? Bury the Kopeck. Once it's gone, what should a quarrel about? Is that all? It's a beginning. Wasting your time. You think you'll ever make them understand? You might stir the soul of a worker, but not theirs. They need a different cure. Well, the soul's another story, brother. At least them two are scratching the right itch. Levshin? Levshin, are you a socialist? Me? No, I'm a weaver, miss. Timothy and me are both weavers. But you know some socialists. You've heard of them. Uh, sure, we've heard of them, but we don't know them. You know Sinsov in the office. Oh, we know all the clerks. Well, have you spoken to him? Why should we speak to him? His place is up in the office. Ours is down in the factory. Don't be scared. We're very interested. Well, what should it be scared of? We've done nothing wrong. They ask us to come up here and keep guard, and we come. Some down there are angry, saying, burn the factory, burn down everything, leave nothing. But we're against all that. Nothing must be burnt. We built it all. Us and our fathers and our grandfathers. Please, you mustn't think we're trying to get you into any trouble. Why should we think that? The way we see it, miss, what our hands have made together is sacred. Burning things don't help. Folks live in darkness. They like a fire. And they're angry now, the dead one. He was strict with us. May he not be remembered for it. Well, does my uncle treat you badly, too? Strict or kind, they're all the same to us. The good ones are boss, and the strict ones are boss. A disease don't pick and choose. Your uncle has a good heart. A fine man, miss. Only we won't benefit from his beauty. Come on, Nadia. They don't want to understand us. She's a good little girl. It's a pity she's rich. We'll have to tell Sinsoff. We will. They'll have to give in now. What else can they do? The dead in the house. Don't try to tell me what I can do. When you die, I shall dance the mazurka. Huh? Oh, what's this? You on guard duty? Yes, sir. Good men. How many of you here? A two. Idiot. I can count up to two. I mean, how many of you all together? About 30. Are you armed? Uh, yes, sir. If these rioters come, will you shoot? Oh, they won't come, sir. They just lost their tempers. I'm asking you, will you shoot? Prepared to shoot, but we don't know how. Yeah. Khan, teach him. Take him down to the river. Your Excellency, will cause a lot of excitement if we start shooting now. Well, then do it tomorrow. Well, it'll be all quiet by tomorrow. They'll open the factory. <laughs> if it were up to me, I'd close it forever. No more hooting so early every morning. We wouldn't mind sleeping a bit later, too, sir. You? I'd starve you all. That'd teach you to riot. Yes, sir, are we rioting? Silence! You should be on patrol. If anyone attempts to invade, shoot! I'll answer for it. Yes, sir, General. Come on, Timothy. Idiots! Civilians! Excellency, the peasants are coarse and brutish. I happen to have a vegetable garden, sir. Yes, yes, everyone should work. But, Excellency, excuse me, sir. Excellency? Every night, the workers descend on my labors. And steal your vegetables? Precisely. Now, I, of course, seek the protection of the law, though which is 
represented here by his honor, the commissary of district police, a person that's entirely indifferent to the animadversions of the general population. Why do you talk in such an extraordinary way? Well, I studied for three years at the business college, and uh, I read the newspapers every day. Of course, that explains it. <laughs> I'm delighted if I give you pleasure. <laughs> pleasure, huh? Don't you love fishing? I've never tried, Excellency. Well, which? Fishing or loving? The former. And the latter? No, I, oh, I've, I've tried the latter. <laughs> Beyond belief! How dare he! What's happening? Your nephews agree to all the demands of my husband's murderer. Well, they're not all murderers! Making a mockery of the corpse and me! Opening the factory before this time to, to bury the body of the man who closed it! Michael was afraid to Oh, you be quiet! Oh, Oh, that, that clerk had the nerve to suggest that the murder was provoked by the victim himself. I... A clear call for oh. socialism. He's far too clever for a clerk. Do you mean Sinsoff? Yes. Excellency, uh, when Mr. Sinsoff reads the newspapers, he makes political comments which are far from impartial. Does that interest you? Oh. Yes. Good night, Mr. Pologi. Uh, well, excuse me, I'll go, of course. Uh, oh. Oh, God! What is happening? Zakhar, I'm too old for all this. Just a minute, Uncle. You invited me here for a rest. Nikolai Vasilyevich! Nikolai Vasilyevich! Sir? The workers were so excited, I was afraid they might destroy the entire factory. So I agreed not to close down. But I made it a condition that they hand over the murderer. So, we've decided to open the factory as from noon tomorrow. Who is we? I, uh... On my brother's death, his vote passed to me and to his wife. Now, if I'm not mistaken, you should have consulted us on this question, not gone off and made a decision independently. But I invited you to come. I, I, I sent Sinsar. On the day of my brother's death, I can hardly be expected to attend to business. But something had to be done. Your brother sent a telegram asking for soldiers. They'll be arriving tomorrow. Soldiers? Good! A wise precaution. The workers are bound to become a little worried when they see soldiers. God knows what might happen if the factory remained closed. You should have never given in to those criminals, if only out of respect for the memory of my dead brother. Oh, oh God, I have to live with the workers. They might destroy the entire factory. I only want what's right and good. Good, what's that? Only a word, a bunch of letters. G for George, O for Obo, D for Dog. That doesn't get the job be done, quiet, huh? Be quiet, Grandfather. Uncle, he doesn't understand. The important thing is for the workers to be satisfied. Nadia, I'm very displeased with you. So am I. It's only natural for you to sympathize with the workers at your Give age. Give it to her. But our people are uncultivated, coarse. You offer them a finger, they'll grab an arm. Yes, as a drowning man grabs a straw. They're like untrained animals, dear. They need to be taught, not spoiled. How dare you talk to me like that, miss? Let me remind you that it'll take you 40 years before you reach my age. And then, perhaps, I'll allow you to talk to me as an equal, not before. Khan! Khan! Do they know who killed him? Of course they know. <laughs> they all know. It's a plot. They're frightening. Their simplicity is frightening. Why did Mikhail have to send for soldiers? They found out. They find out everything. I, I, I had to open the factory. In times like these, it is wise for a man to have friends among the common people. Who's there? Just us. Well, Sinsoff. Levshin, now that a man has been killed, you're all quiet and humble. Always humble, Zakhar Ivanich. What's this you've been preaching, eh? We must do away with money and, and bosses? Well, now I've been living a long while. I have things to say. Not all bosses are cruel. I only want what's best for God's sake, best for you. We understand. No, you don't. Your beast, one moment, children, the next. He's a Chinaman, that one, a real Chinaman. <laughs> Understands nobody but himself. Matvey Nikolaj. 
Would you like to have something to eat? Just some tea. I've talked so much today, my throat's sore. Aren't you afraid of anything? Me? No. Well, I am. Well, don't be afraid to think. Think without fear. Have they calmed down? Yes. Workers so seldom win. Even a little victory is a great satisfaction. Do you love them? Well, I know their strength. I believe in their good sense. And that the future belongs to them. Yes. Yakov, please. Oh, please, don't. <laughs> what else can I do? You could find something. I don't want to. You see, I have a revulsion, an unconquerable revulsion for work and everything to do with it. You see, I belong to the third category. The what? The third category. Some people spend their whole lives working themselves to death. Others sit back, rake in the profits. So, you see, I belong to the third group. It includes all the idlers, monks, sponges, and all the other parasites of this earth. Uncle. You're just kind and gentle. No. In other words, a good for nothing. I found that out when I was still in school. People fall into their own categories at a very early age. Yakov, this is very boring. I agree. But, hey, Nikolai, what do you think? Does life have a face? Possibly. Hmm. Oh, it has. And it's always young. Not long ago, life used to look at me with indifference, but now it looks at me sternly. And it asks, who are you? What are you? Where are you going? May I have a glass of tea? I wish I could understand why the workers don't trust Uncle Zakhar and why they, they won't don't trust let... people who exhort them with cries like workers of the world unite. They trust that all right. And soon there's going to be another cry. Civilized people of the world unite. The barbarian is coming. He's on his way to trample underfoot the fruits of a thousand years of human endeavor. He's on his way, driven by greed. And his soul is in his belly. In his empty belly. <laughs> this is enough to drive a man to drink. The crowd is coming, led by greed and organized by a single virtue to grab and guzzle everything in sight. The crowd? I don't understand you. There are crowds everywhere. Theaters, churches. Mm, what do these people contribute? Nothing but destruction. It's so odd hearing the workers spoken of as, as leading anything. How can they? But you? You, Mr. Tsinsoff? You, of course, don't agree with us. Hmm? No. Why? 
perhaps you'd deign to share your views with us. I'm sorry. I shall console myself with the hope that the next time we meet, your attitude will have changed. Yakov Ivanich, may I have a word with you? Why do you? Because I feel the same way myself. You don't feel the same way. You want to understand. He doesn't. I feel sorry for him. He's probably very cruel. He is. He's in charge of all the political cases in the town. It's disgusting the way he treats the prisoners. I ought to tell you something. He wrote something in his notebook about you. <sighs> I'm not surprised. He has long talks with Pologi. Dashyana Pavlovna, may I ask a favor of you? Well, I'd be pleased to do anything I could. Have the soldiers been sent for? Yes. Can you help me to hide something? Will you be searched? Of course. Would you be arrested? Why? All my speeches tell the workers to keep calm. But what about your past? I don't have a past. Will you help me? I'm afraid. You see, I'm, I'm just a Your guest son, here. I... You can't. Please, don't be angry with me. <laughs> I'm not. I understand. Goodbye. Don't worry. But I feel so... should go to bed. Because I don't want to go to bed. Oh, I think I'd... I'd like to go away somewhere. <laughs> well, there's no place I can go. I've already been everywhere. This place is suffocating. I feel dizzy. One has to lie so much. I don't like telling lies. No. Unfortunately, for me. Those people take such advantages. What are you talking about? What? I meant sense of. Mm -hmm. It's all so strange. Not so long ago, life seemed so simple. One knew what one wanted. Talented drunks. And some idlers and other such specialists in gaiety have ceased to amuse. Uh, while we stood aside from the action, we were admired. But now the action is becoming more dramatic. Hey, you clowns, you comedians, get off the stage. With the stage, it's your element, Tanya. 
this stage. Oh, I used to think so once upon a time. But now they look at me with such cold eyes. I wanted to say words. Just words. Words full of fire and passion and anger. Words that would cut like knives and blaze like torches so that people would be set alight by them and turn to flee from them. And then I could stop them. Toss them different words. New words. As beautiful as flowers. Full of hope and courage and love. And they'd all be weeping. And I'd weep too. Wonderful tears. And then they'd bear me up on their shoulders and smother me with flowers. And for a moment, life was there. All of life in a single moment. Yes. Living in moments, it's all we're capable of. Everything that's best in life always seems to happen in a single moment. Oh, my God, how I wanted... How I wanted people to be different. And life to be different. A life where art was needed by everybody all the time. So I could stop feeling so superfluous. What's wrong with you, Yakov? Why do you drink so much? It's killing you. Oh, don't. Don't you understand me? Don't I? <laughs> I understand. And this is the terrible part. Every moment of the day, I see this face staring at me. And it asks, well... Hmm, just one word. Don't talk to me! Don't talk to me! No, leave me alone! You can't even please! I can't bear it! Tanya, I can't! Tanya, please! Help me! It's Cleopatra, she's gone crazy, she's insulting everyone. You're the only one who can leave calm her down. Rip each other to bits, but for God's sake, stop trampling on other people. Tanya! What's wrong with you? I don't understand you. I don't understand any of you people. What do you want? Tanya, please. She's coming. Oh, this is awful. Please, please be quiet. Please. I shall go out of my mind. You respected the workers, so you threw them a man's life. Pure humanism with someone else's blood. What is she talking about? The truth. Madam, we are decent, respectable huh? people, and we will not allow ourselves to be shouted at by a woman of your reputation. Yes, Pauline, for God's sake. You chatter about politics, about the suffering of the people, about progress. You, you shut up. It's none of your business. You don't belong here. And you, my husband knew the workers better than you. And you, with your idiotic ideas, you murdered him. How dare she insult people like that? How could she have loved her husband? She changes lovers twice a year. We'll have to sell the factory. What? No. Never. Give it up. No, we, we must never give it up. We must think the whole thing through. Nikolai hates us. Well, he's had a terrible shock. I don't trust him. I'm afraid of him. No, no, Pauline. He has... He has a very sound judgment. He says that every hill has a strictly limited horizon. It's quite true, you know. And that if I try to see more than it's possible for me to see from the top of my hill, I shall fall. And there's some truth in that. I, I have chosen a rather shaky position with the workers there. They're so hostile. They, they look at everything so suspiciously. They're all our enemies. They're all full of envy. 
That's partly true. Nikolai Vasilyevich says it's a class struggle like a race struggle. Black against white. That's a crude way of putting it, but... Uh, you know... When, when you come to think of it... It's us. It's the people of culture who have created the sciences, the arts, and so on. Physiological equality, yes, but let them, let them become a little more human. Let them acquire some culture. Then, then perhaps we can talk about equality. I don't understand what you're saying. I haven't thought the whole thing through yet, but one, one thing is important. Know thyself. You're too gentle, my darling. We know so little. Sinsoff surprised me. I grew to like him for his simplicity, and now it turns out he's a socialist. That's where he gets his simplicity. Oh. My dear, you ought to get some rest. Pashuk, it's all got to do with being a comrade, Pashuk. I know. Folks are raising their heads. Their minds are open. Anyone who's understood something is valuable. There's been a killing. Someone's got to pay. Yes, someone has to pay. Oh, I understand. We've got to hold tight to each other. Like a chain. That's it. Well, it makes me sick to have to pay for his blood. It's for your comrades, brother, not for the blood. It's bad blood. It's the bad we've got to get rid of. The good ones don't matter. They're going to die off by themselves. Yakimov wants to give himself up, but we need him. He's hot blooded, but he's valuable to us all. More valuable than. I know. I'll go tell him now. No! Tomorrow. Night, sir. Kind counselor. Good night. God be with you. Goodbye, brother. I think we'll make it. I pity him. Yes. He's a good boy. Now he has to go to prison. But it's for his comrades. I still pity him. Why did Yakimov have to pull that trigger? Where does a killing get you?
like some tea? Thank you, I'd love some. It's beautiful here, really, a lovely place. By the way, I know Tatiana Lugavaya. Didn't she play last uh, season possibly. in Bologna? Uh, how was your search? Did you find anything? Oh, we found everything. Even when there's nothing there, we find something. Good. They'll be punished most severely. Your being here gives me a great <laughs> sense of comfort. It is our duty to keep society in good spirits. Would you like to see the room where the interrogation will take place? With pleasure. Do you know, Tatiana Lugavaya is really a superb actress. Where would she be playing next season? I really don't know. Aha, uh -huh, so this is the courtroom. Beautiful. We'll serve up our dish about here. What's his name? Sintsoff. And round Sintsoff, the workers of the world, huh? <laughs> the owner here now is a nice man, really. Not so well thought of by our people, though, no. I know his sister-in-law, Tatiana Lugavaya, a superb My husband actress, paid too really. little attention to these pamphlets. He said that paper never made a revolution. Mm, not quite correct, I'm afraid. Well, Kvatch. They've all been searched, sir. Anything in the prisoner's rooms? There was evidence hidden behind icons in prisoner Levshin's room, sir. Put it on the table. You may go. Kvatch looks like a fool, but... Mm, you should do something about that clerk. Oh, certainly. I mean, Pelogi. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, would you like more tea? Oh, thank you. It's a beautiful place here, really lovely. Listen, you tombstone of the law as the general calls you. The general is not a strikingly witty man. Well, does that annoy you? I'm not in the mood for jokes at the moment. Oh, my God. Are you really such a serious man? May I remind you that my brother was killed yesterday? Well, what's that to you? I beg your pardon? Oh, stop acting. You really didn't care at all for your brother. There now. Death. Or oh, the suddenness of death. Always has a very bad effect on everybody. But I can assure you, you really felt nothing at all for your brother. You don't have any real feelings for anybody. Any more than I have. That's very interesting. We're kindred spirits, you and I. I am an actress. Wanting only one thing, a really good role to play. You'd like to play a good role, too. Tell me, wouldn't you like to be public prosecutor instead of just a sister prosecutor? What I would like is for you to stop this. Oh, well. I'm afraid I'm hopeless at diplomacy. And I was so determined to be nice to you. Really enchanting. But I just can't seem to help insulting you. Whether you're standing, sitting, walking, talking, or just silently condemning people. However, no use, Eric. Mr. Tsinsoff is very deeply compromised. You rather enjoyed telling me that, didn't you? You see, we're kindred spirits. Tell me, is Mr. Sinsoff completely in your hand? Of course. And if I ask you to let him go? Would have no effect. Even if I begged you to let him go? I am amazed at you. Really, I wonder why. Eccentricity is a disease. Any civilized person would be shocked at your behavior. So. I'm condemned. And since so. 
That gentleman is going to prison this evening. Is that absolutely, completely certain? Yes. If I wanted it, if I wanted it badly enough, you'd release himself. Try. Try wanting it badly. Try. If I could, you would release him, so. I don't know. Well, I do. Oh, what a pair of swine we are. There are some things that even a woman can't do with impunity, you know? Well, it seems you value your principles a little less highly than you value a woman's kiss. I won't listen to you anymore. Why don't you go then? I'm not stopping you. such a tragedy. Cleopatra acts as though she's mistress here. Pouring tea, chattering away with that captain. It's like living with a madhouse. We must take an interest in politics. Politics, certainly, but what has that got to do with socialism? Yes, you're right, my dear. <laughs> well, brother? Foul oh, brother. Yakov. What did you say? I suppose you're blaming me for these arrests. No one's blaming. How would you have handled it? It's a question of facing the facts, necessities. What is? They have my head over a block. Oh. We didn't send for the soldiers, and we certainly didn't invite the security corps. They always turn up of their own accord. We could not allow socialist propaganda. Oh, what sort of socialist is old Levshin? He's just worked himself to death. Now he's delirious with exhaustion. Why don't you have some pity on us? The murderers confessed. Well, well who is it? Some boy. I'm glad. It may not sound very humanitarian, but I would like to see him whipped to death. Where's Nikolai? Why are you all sitting around like a bunch of wet hens, huh? Uncle. <laughs> It is very unpleasant. Oh, those security officers? Oh, yes, you, you can't trust them like real soldiers. That captain is a complete oaf. I'd like to play a trick on him. Dump a bucket of cold water on him when he comes through a door, huh? General, the captain's very efficient. He's an excellent man. To her, any man is an excellent man. <laughs> Every person needs to know his own place. Every person must keep firmly in his own place. Khan! Khan, where are you? Khan! There's a hole in my tent! How one longs for peace and quiet. A normal life. Uncle, those women must be allowed to see their husbands. Please, you must go tell that captain. Not. 
I don't think it'll do any good. Nadia, you're always making trouble for everyone. It's you who's always making trouble. Me? All of us. We don't do anything, but it's oh, because of us. Nadia, you calm down. There isn't anything you can do. I don't want to calm down. Your poor mother was right about you. Yes, she was right. But she worked. What do you do? How dare you shout at your elders? You're not elders. You're just old. Tanya, these are your ideas, really. I think you should tell her she's just a silly little girl. Oh, just a silly little girl. You know, there's really no place for you even here in your own home. You don't know what you're saying. But the soldiers... The soldiers are here to protect us. Aunt Paulina, soldiers can't protect anybody from stupidity. Well, please, please, I mean everybody. Now she'll tell Uncle Zakhar that I'm rude. And he will come and make a long speech and all of the flies will fall off the walls from boredom. No, no. <laughs> what are you going to do? Where will you live? Not here. Not like this. I don't know what I'm going to do, but... Look. Look at Grekov. He knows he's going to prison, but he's happy. I'll never forget Leslie, but I'm ashamed to look at him now. They're so happy. People like that who live as they want to aren't afraid of anything. They can laugh. <laughs> Please, you must allow those women to see their husbands. No, I won't. I'm wicked. Of course. You're in the security corps. Why won't you? Law. What's the law got to do with it? What do you mean, what's the law got to do with it? Are you another one who doesn't acknowledge the law? Don't talk to me like that. I'm not a child. Are you sure? It's only children and revolutionaries who refuse to acknowledge the law. Well, then I'm a revolutionary. Well, in that case, we shall have to send you off to jail. <laughs> Stop joking and let those people go. I can't. The law... The law is stupid. If you're not a child, as you say, then you must know that the law is established by the authorities and the state cannot exist without it. Isn't the state established for the sake of people? First and foremost, I think for the sake of order. You don't understand a thing. She's heading in a dangerous direction, that young lady. Her uncle, I believe, is a man of liberal views, isn't he? Well, you should know, Captain. I'm afraid I don't even know what a liberal is. Of course you do. Everyone does. Lack of respect for authority, that's what liberalism is. <laughs> but I wanted to tell you, madam, I saw you last season. I did so appreciate your acting. So subtle, so extraordinarily subtle. Perhaps you noticed me. I always sat next to the vice governor. I was an adjutant at the time. Well, I don't remember, perhaps. But of course there are... There are security police in every town, aren't there? Oh, yes, absolutely. And it's we in the provincial administration who are the true connoisseurs of art. <laughs> it's quite a tradition with us. Where will you be playing next season? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But it... It will have to be some place where there are true connoisseurs of art. That just can't be avoided, can it? Of course. You know, people are becoming more cultured, little by little. Sir! Sir, where do we put the man who did the shooting? In there. Put them all in there. May I watch? Ah, I'm afraid it's not allowed in political cases. Ah, but, but this is a criminal case, isn't it? I would like to offer you some pleasure. Well, I shall be invisible. Excuse me, I must find our assistant prosecutor. that one. He was down on the river when the shooting was going on. I saw him. So did the general. 
don't you say something? Tell them it wasn't you. No, it was me. Oh, you're lying. You were on the river when they did it. Which is the murderer? This one. Yes. No, he's not. What's that clutch? Throw him out. Keep your hand off me. I'm a soldier myself. Allow me, please. Was it you who killed my brother? Yes. Why? He was cruel to us. He That's was the truth. What's your name? Pavel Ribsoff. I see. Now, Kong, what was it you were saying? He didn't kill him. He was down on the river when the shooting was going on. The general and me saw him. I'll take an oath on that. Did you know that there are severe punishments laid down for anyone making false statements or trying to shield a criminal? Did you know that? Yes. So you insist you're the one who killed my brother? Yes. He's lying! Hey, soldier, this is none of your business. And you? Are you connected with this murder? Me? I once killed a rabbit... Then hold your tongue! Where is the revolver that you used? I threw it in the river. What was it like? Describe it. You know, an iron thing with a... How big was it? Well? Well, not too big. This boy is a substitute. He is, I see, yes. It's a collective crime. What? Have Quatch take him away and put him in isolation, complete isolation. Come. Can't he come with me? Where is the general? Digging for words. Quatch, take this one away. Keep a close watch on him. Very good, sir. Goodbye, Pashik. Goodbye, friend. Strong. Goodbye. Don't worry. Old man. You know that one. Work together. What's your name? Yefim Yefimovich Levshin. Now, Levshin. You know, you must always speak the truth to the authorities, right? Why lie? Splendid. What's hidden behind the icons in your room? Nothing. Now, the authorities not only know what you do, they know what you think as well. What are these? These are books forbidden by the authorities. They were taken from behind your icons. Are they yours? The books look pretty much alike. How can an old man lie like that? Who yes, gave you? me. What was behind my icons? Now, you wouldn't be asking me that if everything hadn't been took away. <laughs> so I knew there was nothing there, and I said so. Quiet! Who gave you these I've forgotten. Don't let it worry you. Aha. Right. Alexei Grekov, which one of you is Grekov? I am. Were you the subject of an investigation into a case of I revolutionary... Was. A pleasure to make your acquaintance. All right, all of you, stand over there! like these people. But why are they so simple? Why do they, they think so simply and feel so deeply? Why don't they have any passion, any, any heroism? They have a calm belief in their own truth. Oh, Levshin. <laughs> he understands it all. He wonders why we bother. Why don't we just get out of the way? I'm convinced now that the boy was bribed, ripped off as shielding someone. 
They couldn't have thought it up for themselves. Sin's off. Who else? Captain Bobiedo. I'm convinced now that the boy was bribed. I think we should take Sin's off into town for very intensive questioning. Do you understand? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Quatsch! Has something happened? Does that matter to you? Have you heard about Sintsov? Yes. He's been arrested. I'm glad. Are you? Does that matter to you? You liked Sintsov, didn't you? Why? Only a woman can be a friend to another woman. What do you want? I envy you. But sometimes I don't like you. Sometimes I even hate you. Why? Who are you? What did you say? I don't understand who you are. We must trust each other, don't you see? They're starting to kill us now. They live together like a family of friends, trusting each other. We live together like enemies, trusting nothing. We depend on the soldiers and the police to defend us. They depend on nothing but themselves. And they are stronger than we are. Were you ever happy with your husband? No. He was always too busy. And he was much too handsome, wasn't he? No. That's strange. I thought all women were attracted to him. There's not much joy in that for a wife. Sintsov is a socialist. Well, I know that's a small thing, but it just goes to show you how difficult life is becoming. Your sworn enemies are right beside you and you don't even recognize them. Thank God I'm not rich. <laughs> Say that when you're old. Cleopatra. We've completed the funeral arrangements. Oh, don't! You... It's good you had a talk with her. I envy you, Tanya. You always manage to find the comfortable middle position. I'll see if I can help her. Eavesdropping? Well, that's not very nice. No. No, it's a bad thing altogether listening to what other people say. Tanya? I'm gonna go away. And you should go away, too. Why are you smiling? I don't know. I just am. me like you'd kiss a corpse. Every officer must be able to remember the names and faces of every man in his company. A recruit is a sly animal. An officer must get right inside his soul so that the animal becomes human, open to reason and devoted to duty. Uncle, have you seen Yakov? No, I haven't seen Yakov. Have you seen my brother, Paul? No. I'm finished telling people things. 
I said enough for my life. There are some peasants outside. They're asking if they can postpone paying the rent again. Oh, of course, what a time to choose. Well, they say they have no money to pay you with. As usual. Have you, have you seen Yakov? No. What shall I tell them? Oh, tell them to go to the office. Well, you know perfectly well there's nobody at the office. Well, since I'm, I'm very sorry. Have you, have you any complaints against me? Your salary will be forwarded to you, of course. It's impossible. Our home is being turned into a police headquarters. Well, Mr. Tsinsov. This is not Mr. Tsinsov, sir. What? This is Maxim Markov. We arrested him two years ago. He's got no nail on his left thumb. I know. I see. Well, Mr. Tsinsov, or whatever your name is, you're off to town. Where did you escape from? You'll find out. <laughs> oh, yes. We'll find out. Do you remember your friend? That teacher? Well, we recaptured him, too, the other day. He died in prison, now. There are not many of you, are there? There will be. Just wait. I have a feeling about him. I'm a fine specimen. It's easy to see where it all started. He'll be tried now, will he? We eat them just as they come. Like oysters? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I believe we're ready. The interrogation's going to be in here, you know. I don't know anything. Mikhail made a mistake. He said it was a red-haired man who shot him. But in fact, he turns out to have dark hair. Live men make mistakes, too. <laughs> There's no reason to be angry with me. I'm not angry. They can all go to hell. I'll be dead soon, thank God. My heart's on the blink already. <laughs> Everyone's going to be dead. That's nothing to be proud of. That's ah, enough. 65 dirty tricks are like nuts. I've got no teeth for them. <laughs> Pavel Ribtsov. Well? Not well, you fool. Here, Your Honor. So you insist that you are the one who killed my brother? You've already asked me that, Your Honor. And I said yes, sir. Do you know Alexei Grekov? Well, he works with us. Of course, but in fact, you're close friends. But we're all friends. Mr. Pologi, tell us what is the relationship between Ribitsov and Grekov? A relationship, sir, a very close friendship. And there are two groups here. The younger group, led by Grekov, a young man of amazing impertinence in his behavior to those in superior positions. And the older group, headed by Yefim Levshin, an old man, sir, fantastical in his speech and foxy in his actions. Go on. Now, these two groups are linked by Mr. Sinsov, who's on good terms with everybody. Uh, this individual is unlike an ordinary man with a normal mind. He reads books and has his own opinions about everything. In his residence, sir, which I might add is nearly opposite... There my... is no need for all this detail. Truth demands completeness of form, Of sir. course, but we don't have time. 
His residence here is frequented most frequently by one Grekov here. Is present. that true, Grekov? It's no use asking me any questions. I won't answer them. Good, good. Nadia, behave yourself. Shh, Nadia, shh, shh. Well, everyone who has no business here, please leave. Who has no business here? Christ, what's that noise? There's a man trying to force his way in, sir. Who is it? Find out what he wants, Christ. Do you wish me to continue, Excellency? Will you all please leave? I was going to think of that. You're the ones with no business here, not me. Nadia. You have no business. Another murderer, sir. And what do you want? It was me. I killed the managing director. You? Me. These people are going to win, you know. You monster! What terrible people! Well, here I am. Eat me. Don't cry, Nadia. These people are going to win. Well, Mr. Ribsoff. A quiet, Pasha. Quiet! There's no need to shout, mister. We're not shouting. Oh, and then Yakimov, tell him how he was posted. I told you, it's got liar! I'm not a liar, mister! Let's throw him out! You can't throw him out!